about reparations. Uh, now, in case you think that this is not a a hot topic or a hot potato, uh, let me just share with you two slides uh, that I, I found on the internet. Uh, the first slide says uh, reparations now for the descendants of African enslaved in America. And this was uh, people uh, organized for progress. And there's all kind of uh, signs that, I mean, I, I could have brought sign after sign after sign where uh, people are demanding reparations. And then there's the other side that says uh, reparations were already paid. And this was uh, the Civil War. And so, you know, you got uh, another side saying that uh, the fact that the slaves were free uh, shows that reparations were already paid. Uh, so, you know, again, this is a, uh, a very, very controversial uh, topic. And Saints, you know, you, you know me, I think that uh, we always first need to look to the word of God uh, to see uh, what the word if you know, again now you know uh, a lot of topics uh, the bible doesn't directly address you know for instance it doesn't address uh, crack cocaine so you you can't go to the bible and find a verse that talks about crack cocaine you know you can't go to the bible and you know find a a subject that or or a a topic that might deal with some other things uh but you know in principle uh it will speak to some of these issues so you know when you look at crack cocaine you know the scripture says that your body is a temple of the holy spirit right so that lets you know even though the bible doesn't say anything about crack uh that you know you don't need to be putting it in your body uh well i the Bible, interestingly, uh, and you may have not have ever uh, thought of this, but the Bible does speak about reparations. So it's not one of those uh, topics that uh, we have to go to. What does the, the spirit of the Bible say? You know, are there principles that touch on this subject? But the Bible does speak directly about reparations. And uh, and we're going to see that uh, today, uh, you know, and, and as we look at what the word of God says, uh, you know, we're going to uh, attempt to uh, draw some conclusions uh, based on what the word of God uh, says. So, uh, you know, again, uh, very controversial subject, you know, very strong emotions and feelings on on both sides of the uh, issue. All right. So let's begin by defining reparations. Uh, in general, reparations is the replenishment of a previously inflicted loss by the criminal to the victim. And another definition, a general definition for reparations would be the act of making amends, offering expiation, giving satisfaction for a wrong or injury. Uh, so th those are two general definitions for reparations. But let's go ahead and put uh, this topic in the context of what we're talking about and the issue that has become so controversial in our, our day. And that's this whole uh, racial uh, side of reparations in America. Uh, And it refers to the brutal institution of enslaving blacks in America during the 16 through the 1800s to build and bring prosperity to this country and how the government should pay the ancestors of those slaves used uh, for that labor. So that's uh, the context of what we are dealing with reparations in uh, today so that you know, we you know we are specifically because as as you look at people uh, asking for reparations, you know uh, it's uh, mostly uh, black people, 
and they are asking for reparations for uh, uh, work that the slaves did to build, build this country uh, that they never were paid for. And so, you know, you have people today uh, that are uh, some requesting and some demanding reparations. Uh, so when we think about uh, the settlement of reparations, what, you know, how do people want reparations settled? Okay. Uh, proposed slavery reparations include uh, infer affirmative action, you know, which we see was, you know, big, uh, you know, several years ago. Uh, uh, this is the big one right here. Uh, monetary settlements. You know, people want monetary settlements uh, as far as reparations are concerned. Uh, scholarships, waiving fees, you know, uh, certain fees that are uh, applied to institutions. Apologies, uh, you know, the, you know, I believe that whatever form that you want, whether it's affirmative action, monetary scholarships, whatever, that uh, what people want uh, to preclude that is an apology. Uh, acknowledgements of injustice. And we've even seen in the last uh, couple years, removal of monuments, renaming of streets and buildings. Uh, international reparations for slavery have mainly consisted of public recognition of injustice and apologies for various countries' involvement, uh, but not material compensation. Uh, and I took this from uh, the website gotquestions.org. But we all know that the big ask, uh, as far as reparations are concerned, is money. You know, people want to. Uh, receive some type of financial remuneration. Uh, and, you know, as, as you know, and, and again, uh, the apology is also uh, one that that's, that's being looked for. And, uh, you know, I, I was reading, and I didn't know this, but, uh, you know, some of the, the research that I found uh, that other countries have apologized to uh, Black people in America because they were a part of slavery uh, uh, when they were shipping the slaves over here on, on the boats and other countries got involved to enslave the, the uh, Africans and have them shipped over here to America. So I, I didn't realize that, but you know, uh, I thought that that was, uh, that was very interesting also. So when we look at reparation and settlements, uh, these are some of the things that's being asked for as far as settlements are concerned. Now, let's look at uh, the Bible, slavery in America, and reparations. Uh, and so we want to go to what the word of God says. So, you know, again, uh, this whole idea of reparations is not something that's unknown to the Bible. Uh, the Bible is very clear uh, in the Old Testament and the New Testament that uh, reparations are in order. Now, you know, before we uh, all get off this Zoom call and, and go try to get our 40 acres in a mule, uh, I just want to announce up front that uh, there are, are some complications. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to deal with those on the back end of it. Uh, but, you know, again, you know, we just want to say that, you know, this whole uh, issue of slavery in America and reparations that is very complicated. So uh, let me let me just say that. So again, so that uh, uh, we don't get excited and and, and uh, try to, like I said, get our forty acres in a mule. Uh, restitution is a biblical concept, uh, and I have this. If you have your notes, uh, you can uh, read along with me, or if you have your Bible, uh, you can open your Bible and you can read along with me. Also, uh, Exodus 21 and verse 22 in the New American Standard Bible says this. Now, if people struggle with each other and strike a pregnant woman so that she gives birth prematurely, but there is no injury, the guilty person shall certainly be uh, fined as the woman's husband may demand of him. And 
he shall pay as the judges decide. So again, you know, the idea here is if there's a lady that's pregnant and two people get into a fight and uh, the, the pregnant lady is injured, uh, then uh, there should be restitution paid that uh, the woman's husband uh, can go to the judge and demand that the person who uh, injured the pregnant lady uh, make payment for that, make some type of restitution uh, for that. Uh, we see uh, in the book of Numbers, uh, Numbers uh, 5, verses 5 through 9, that restitution is a biblical concept. Uh, and I'm reading out of the New English translation because it's it, it's a very interesting read. Uh, Numbers 5, 5 through 9. The Lord spoke to Moses, tell the Israelites, when a man or a woman commits any sin that people commit, thereby breaking faith with the Lord, and that person is found guilty, then he must confess his sin that he has committed. And, and notice this, uh, this the New English translation says this, and must make full reparation. So uh, they translate uh, the word uh, restitution here, uh, they translated reparation. And uh, I did go back and look this up in the Hebrew. And as we look at this word that's used here, uh, it, ca it can, you know, refer to uh, reparations. And it, so reparations is really, you know, a a, uh, a fair translation, you know, of the word. Uh, and notice it goes on to say, add one fifth to it and give it to whomever he wronged. So in other words, that if somebody sinned against somebody else, that they should make full reparation. And, and so uh, say that, you know, I did something that injured another person and it cost $10, right? So in order for me to make reparation, uh, what I needed to do was pay the $10, you know, and that would, that, that would suffice the reparation. But notice that it also says that I should also add one fifth to it. So a fifth of uh, $10 would be $2. So uh, in other words, you know, the reparations here, uh, should be $12, uh, and he shall give it to whoever ever he wronged. But if the individual has no close relative to whom reparation, so again, we see that word reparation can be made for the wrong. The reparation for the wrong must be paid to the Lord for the priest in addition, uh, and it goes on to talk about the type of sacrifice that uh, that was given. So we see and, and 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 let me say this: these are just a couple of verses uh, that I picked out because there are there are several verses uh, in the uh, Old Testament, especially that talk about restitution. Uh, so we see that this is a biblical concept. You know, it's not something that's out of the blue, but it's uh, this idea of restitution and reparation is uh, is is in embedded in the Scripture and. and even going on, we see in the book of James that God condemns taking advantage of labor of one group for the financial gain of another group. Uh, he's very clear. So, I mean, you know, we not only know that uh, slavery in America was wrong, uh, but we also see that uh, from the, the biblical standpoint, from the scriptural standpoint, uh, that it's addressed. So even in the New Testament, uh, we see that when one group takes advantage of another group, especially in the area of labor, then, you know, God is not pleased with that. In James chapter 5, if you have your Bibles, you can uh, turn there with me. Uh, James uh, chapter 5, verses uh, 1 through 5. It says, go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupt and your garments moth-eaten. 
your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasures together for the last days. Listen to this. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which you have kept back by fraud. It says that instead of you compensating the people who are out there in the fields working, that you have kept back the pay for your own selfish gain. It says that these people that are crying out in the field because of this injustice, it says this, and the cries of them which have reaped, the cries of the people who are in the field working, have entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. He says that God hears their prayers. And look at the judgment. That, that comes on these individuals. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of slaughter. So, you know, in other words, what uh, the Lord is saying is that by you ripping off these servants in the field working, you are fattening your own self for the day of slaughter. That, you know, God is, is going to take uh, his advantage of you. And, you know, when you think about, you know, slavery in America and how that, you know, the slaves were, I mean, they just received brutal treatment. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, it's just hard for me to, to, to watch uh, some of these movies that they make about slavery. I just, I, I'd rather not watch them at all because, you know, just to see how, uh, slaves were were treated uh but but they cried out to god you know now some of them didn't you know we watch roots and we see where you know some of them tried to take the situation into their own hands and rebelled and uh but then some of them you know cried out to the lord you know because of the way that they were being treated and and so james says that the lord of sabbath and that word Sabbath uh, actually means the Lord of hosts or another translation, the Lord of the armies. So, you know, God, what's that saying? God is going to do battle that the, that the Lord of the host, the God of the armies, the God of battle has heard their cry and he's going to uh, in, inflict retribution upon those who took advantage of the labor of one group for their own financial gain. Uh, and then let's look at uh, that unjust gain should be restored. Unjust gain should be restored. And we all have heard the, the story growing up of Zacchaeus. You remember that song that the kids used to sing, Zacchaeus was a wee little man. And a wee little man was he. He climbed up in the sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. And as the Lord came by that day, to him he did say. And you remember the kids would all say, Zacchaeus, go home because I'm coming to your house today. Zacchaeus, go home because I'm coming to your house today. And, and, and so Zacchaeus got up in the tree because he wanted to see the Lord. He had heard a lot about this, this man called Jesus. He had heard how he was healing people, feeding people, and he wanted to see Jesus, but he was short and he couldn't see over the crowd. So he climbed up in a tree and he saw Jesus and uh, Jesus saw him. And Jesus says, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house today. Now, what's one thing that's uh, unique about Zacchaeus? The one thing is, is that he was a tax collector and that as a tax collector, Zacchaeus ripped people off. He ripped them off. You know, he would go collect taxes and, you know, for the Roman government and he would add, you know, all type of exorbitant taxes on top of it because he knew that, you know, once he collected the taxes for Rome, when he, once he got their money, 
that anything above that, he could put it in his pocket. So he makes sure he got, you know, Rome's uh, uh, money, and then he jacked up the price so that uh, he could charge people exorbitant interest on their taxes. And, you know, again, uh, nobody was going to mess with him. Why? Because he was serving the Roman government. So he was doing this and getting away with it. And as a matter of fact, you know, it talked about <laughs> it talked about the fact that, you know, he was despised, that uh, people uh, shunned him and they looked down on him because they knew he was ripping people off. And, and even as you go back and read in, uh, uh, in, in Luke chapter 19, uh, it, when it talks about uh, Zacchaeus, uh, that he was a tax collector and that he was rich. Uh, Luke 19 verse 2 says he was rich. And it says that he ran ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree to see Jesus. And when Jesus looked up and saw him, uh, he said, Zacchaeus, come down because I'm going to your house. And so Zacchaeus made haste and came down. Now look, look at this. <laughs> look at this. And when, and when the, and, and when, uh, let me see, let me get, getting ahead of myself here. Uh, and when they saw it, when the people saw it, they all murmured and said, he's going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. He's going to be a guest of a man who is a sinner. You know, Zacchaeus. Now, why'd they call him a sinner? Because he was ripping them off left and right. But notice, when Zacchaeus met Jesus and he wanted to make things right for all the ill-gotten financial gain, notice what he says. And Zacchaeus stood in verse... Uh, Verse 8 of Luke 19. Verse 8 of Luke 19. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So what is that right there? What, what is Zacchaeus doing? He's offering reparations for ill-gotten uh, money that he had received. he's off it, Now, he didn't have to do this. Zacchaeus didn't have to do this, but he was convicted. You know, as he met Jesus, he was convicted. And so, you know, again, listen to what he says. Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. So, again, he's not even talking about the people he ripped off. He's just saying half of what I got, I'm, I'm going to give to the poor, right? And that's before any reparation. He just he just saying that right off the top. You know, as I heard somebody say, right from the giddy up, you know, he's saying that I'm going to give half. Can you imagine? Zacchaeus must have, he must have had some big loot, man. He must have had some big coins, right? Uh, because he said half of what I own, I'm going to start off by giving to the poor. And then... He goes on to say, if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, all right, if I have taken anything, you know, unjustly or illegitimately, he said, I'm going to pay back fourfold. So that if I, again, let me go back to my $10 analogy, that if he ripped somebody off for $10, that he was going to look them up and he was going to pay them back fourfold which would have been forty dollars extra that he would have uh he would have not only paid them back but paid them back fourfold so as we look at the scripture and, and and you know we could probably go to other places in the scripture and deal with these three points that i just now talked about but so again we're talking about the bible slavery in america and reparations so first of all restitution is a biblical concept. No question about that. The second thing is that God condemns taking advantage of the labor of one group by another group for financial gain. That, that's definitely condemned in the scripture. And then uh, unjust gain should be restored. 
uh, we see that uh, in uh, Luke. And then we also have, saw that back in uh, the Old Testament, back in Exodus. Now, saints, here goes the problem, right? Let, let me, let, well, let, uh, let, let, no, let, before, I, before I get into the problem, uh, let me give you two biblical arguments against reparations, right? So let me give you two biblical arguments against people that say, you know, so if we go back, right, if we go back, we see that uh, there are people that are vehement on both sides. There's the side that's uh, very much demanding reparations, and then there's a side that is saying, well, we already paid them. You know, all the people that gave their life during the Civil War, you know, to free the slaves, that was that was reparation. So, again, uh, you know, we see uh, both sides very adamant about their belief. Uh, let's look at uh, two biblical arguments against <clears throat> reparations. And the first one is people living today are not responsible for the action of their for actions of their forefathers during slavery. So even though people exercise slavery in this country, that how can you hold people who are living today responsible? You know, and they quote Deuteronomy 24, Ezekiel 18, where it talks about the sins of the fathers will not come upon the children. All right, and the guilt of the uh, the fathers for what they did will not come upon the children. So how can you hold somebody responsible today for something that somebody did what two three hundred years ago? You know you can't you can't you know how how, how can you do that? And then uh, another argument is uh, people who own slaves. And those who promoted slavery uh, will be individually judged. You know, we see uh, in Ecclesiastes, uh, Solomon, he said uh, in verse uh, 13 and 14 of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, he said, uh, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Uh, and as we hear the conclusion uh, is this, fear God. And keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work in the judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. That those who uh, own slaves, that treated slaves bad, that promoted slavery, it says that God is going to bring their works in the judgment. So God is holding them accountable. So why should you know, somebody living today uh, have to be responsible for what, you know, again, uh, people did two or 300 years ago. Uh, so here's the problem with, uh, with reparations, all right? Uh, first of all, uh, as we just now said, uh, how can you make one person or group who committed no crimes to pay for the crimes of others uh you know that's you, you know again uh you know you got somebody today that uh is trying to trying to make it right they're just like uh everybody else they're trying to make it uh and yet and still you are holding and i'm not when i say you i'm not talking about you particularly i'm talking about in general uh you are holding uh individuals responsible for something that somebody else did you know and, and again uh when i graduated uh from uh with my master's degree i i uh the the the, the title of my master's degree was the curse of canaan and its relationship to the black race and uh i had to go you know, to some major libraries in this country. We didn't have the internet back then when I was doing my master's thesis. So I had to go to these libraries. Uh, and one of the libraries I went to was was Union Theological Seminary Library uh, in Richmond, Virginia. And they had uh, the annals of these uh, politicians, of pastors, of slave masters, and 
and and they were vehement that black people were supposed to be in uh uh slaves and so again uh in my master's thesis you know i wrote on this uh if any of you uh want to read it i i do have a copy of it uh, or uh it's it's in the library at liberty university uh so you can uh you can probably check it out uh through their uh distance learning or, or and you may even be able to go online and read it but in there i quote you know all these politicians slave masters uh preachers who said that slavery was God's will. And they came up with verses to prove that slavery, now they did take their verses out of context, but they came up with verses to say that slavery was, uh, black people were supposed to be slaves, that that's the way God made it. Now you got that person, and then you got a person that's living today who feels like, you know what, man, you know, as a believer, you know, I, I believe that you know, we all should, you know, come together and, you know, we got one common enemy and that common enemy that we need to unite and fight against is the devil, right? And that, you know, we are brothers and sisters in Christ and and we need to be unified. We need to come together. And so, I mean, you got two different mindsets. You got two different attitudes. You got people back in that day who did whatever they had to do to keep the slaves enslaved. And to treat them, now not every slave owner was was brutal, but most of them were. Uh, and 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 to to treat them wrong, treat them bad, right? And and definitely, you know, those individuals owe a debt for what they did. So how can you come, you know, 200, 300 years later? So I, and again, I'm saying that this is the problem with reparations. How can you come two or 300 years later and hold somebody who had absolutely nothing to do with that? How can you hold them accountable? All right. So that, you know, that, that's one of the problems of reparations. Uh, another problem with uh, reparations is who should receive the reparations, right? Now, uh, if we're saying to give reparations to all people of African descent, right, Americans of African descent, right, well, you know, what if uh, they, <laughs> their, their forefathers, their ancestors, you know, were, were treated good? You know, we, we know that some of the slaves are treated good, right? Some of the slaves, you know, were able to go purchase their freedom and, 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 and were helped to go out and, and start you know, businesses and things of that nature. Uh, so how do you figure out who gets the reparations and who doesn't get reparations? So, you know, that's that's another uh, tricky issue. Now, yeah, I, I, let me say this. And, uh, you know, I thank God for, and I think some of the ladies uh, who do the Black History moments uh, here at Bethany are, are on the Bible study right now. And so... You know, I thank the Lord for these ladies because one year, and I, I didn't know this, you know, I, I guess I should bow my head in shame as an African-American that I didn't notice, but they talked about Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ne I never, never heard of it. So it was eye-opening to me. And how that you had a group of people in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who had started businesses, who whose businesses were thriving, whose businesses were flourishing, right? So much so that they called it Black Wall Street. My, my, my. And, the, and how that there was a group of, of, of people who didn't like the way that they were flourishing. And so they they got a, uh, uh, raised up, a insurre not insurrection, but they, they raised up a, a group of people to go and burn the place down. Now you had people, man, that had invested their whole lives into their businesses and within a matter of hours to see them all destroyed, to see their businesses 
wiped out. Now, you know, again, I, I would say, you know, in situations like that, you know, maybe you can go and see, again, this is my thought. And I know there's some people that are not going to agree with this. All right. So I just want to say that this is just my thought, uh, that maybe you could trace the people who own those businesses and, and find out who their descendants were or are. And maybe somehow, you know, that the, the city of Tulsa or, or some, or the, the government there in, uh, Oklahoma would go and try to provide some type of reparations to their ancestors, you know, because again, I mean, to me, in that, in that case, it might be a little bit more clear as to who the descendants uh, are that should receive reparations. But, you know, as far as the national, you know, national reparations, you know, how, how, to me, it just, it's kind of hard to do that, you know, and, and once you start uh, passing out reparations, you know, everybody's going to be a victim, right? Uh, I know just like, uh, and uh, <laughs> no, nah, let me, I'm going to let that go. I'm not, let me, I'm not going to say anything about that. Let me, uh, so, you know, that, that's another issue. Who are the victims that should receive it? Uh, why should a third issue is why should today's citizens uh, be taxed for crimes of past generations? So again, you know, you're talking about lumping all people into a group and saying that, you know, they should all be taxed, you know, because of what happened years ago so that, you know, we can have these reparations. And then, you know, another uh, question is what should the form of these reparations be? You know, when we go back to where I started, you know, should it be affirmative action, uh, monetary settlements, scholarships, waive fees, apologies, acknowledgement of injustice, removal of monuments, naming, renaming streets. So, so you know, what should the form of reparations be? Now, again, uh, we we know probably the primary thing that people are looking for is uh, uh, give me, uh, what did the OJ say? Give me cash money. <laughs> give me cash money. Uh, so that's probably the, the main thing uh, that that people are looking for. Now, I, you know, I will say this, that may, maybe there can be some generalities that uh, we can go back and, you know, maybe provide uh, some, uh, you know, again, I know people have different ideas about affirmative action. Maybe that was one way that the, the government was trying to go back and look at, you know, uh, a form of reparation. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, we can provide uh, certain scholarships. You know, maybe there are certain programs that can be implemented where, you know, people of color can take advantage of them, uh, you know, to in order to receive uh, reparations. But, you know, the, the, again, uh, there seems to be uh, some problems with administering reparations. Uh, and, and so let me, as uh, Solomon said, uh, let's go to the conclusion of the matter. Let's, let's hear the conclusion of the matter. Even though reparations is a biblical concept, there should not be a nationwide mandate that punishes and requires one group of people to make reparations. This is an issue that will be debated and talked about for generations to come. Man may never work out a system, and he won't, I, you know, I probably should say he won't work out a system to fairly deal with reparations. It's just, you know, Man, it's, man is always going to struggle with this. But, you know, and I know some, some of us don't want to hear this. I know some of us don't want to hear this. But this is, this is the one true thing that we can say. This is the one true thing that we can say. The Lord has seen the injustices that have taken place in this country. And he will right all wrongs. Again, I go back to James. He said, behold, the hires of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is 
of you kept back by fraud. They cry and the cries of them who have reaped, who have labored in the field are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath, the Lord of the hosts. So again, I know this is a very controversial uh, topic. I understand that. Uh, and and uh, I know some of you might not agree with some of the things that I said. Uh, that's fine too. You know, uh, you know, I know, you know, because, because of the nature of this, uh, it, it is controversial, but, you know, we can, we can see what the Bible does say. And, uh, you know, there are, there are three things that we know the Bible says, you know, that restitution is biblical. And God condemns people for uh, taking advantage of uh, one, one group that labor for financial gain and that unjust financial gain should be restored. I mean, you know, the scripture is very clear on those three things. Now, you know, again, there's a whole lot of issues that surround, you know, once, you know, uh, this whole issue of reparation. So, you know, we can say this and then, you know, I, I would say we further go and pray and study uh, as we formulate our own ideas and philosophies about uh, reparations. All right. Uh, now that I made everybody mad at me, both sides, I made both sides. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what say ye? What say ye? Amen.